Greetings, friends. I'm Antar, and welcome to my video. I think I'm going to entitle this video The Structured World Hypothesis. Is it Structured World or? Yeah. Structured World Hypothesis was a study that I read uh, before I went to Los Angeles in the second half of the 80s. I went to University of Hawaii in the first half of the 80s and I got my master's degree in music with a concentration in ethnomusicology. And uh, ethno is, really is a multidisciplinary social science. And uh, I read this very fascinating study, the structured world hypothesis, which kind of was very counterintuitive to me, but really woke me up. And the idea is that our perceptions of the outside world are conditioned by the type of structures we live in. Now, most of us, you know, we grow up in a house or an apartment or whatever. And those structures are all, they're all made of right angles. Right? And oblong spaces and uh, almost everything is right angles, you know. Get the floor and ceiling. There might be a peak ceiling, but that's a different kind of angle, but that's a sharp angle and a right angle. And the doors are the doors are rectangular and the windows are rectangular or they're square. I've seen some circular windows, but they're not very typical. So from the get-go, when you're a little kid and you're absorbing all these impressions, that's the kind of structure we live in. And it begins to condition the way we perceive the outside world. Now, I was used to thinking that, well, there was concept, conception, you know, you conceive something uh, as a as a theory or as a concept maybe even in your mind you think about it spatially but the perception is neutral you know you look at a wall it's yellow you look at the sky it's blue you look at your mom's face it's your mom's face but i didn't realize that our perceptions also what we see what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, what we smell, those are also all conditioned. You don't really know what blue is, you know, if you hadn't been conditioned in a language and a concept of blue, you know, you can see the blue sky, you can see blue pictures in your storybook. You can see a blue tablecloth cloth on a on a wooden table. So uh, this structured world hypothesis actually begs a question that you can do a thought experiment, and the experiment is you're sitting, maybe you're sitting with a friend or your lover or your partner or your wife or your husband and you ask them, please look at the door. And they say, yeah, and you, tell, you ask them, please tell me what shape the door is. And the person says, the door is rectangular, of course. And it's rectangular, we know that it's rectangular, but the actual image on that person's retina is a trapezoid. It's an upside down trapezoid. And there's a, a function in the brain that 
makes it right side up and it's a trapezoid so it's, if it's my my lover is she describing what she's seeing or is she describing the memory of the first time she ever perceived a door or she's saying the door is rectangular because she knows the door is rectangular because we've all lived in these structures so I found that really fascinating that even our perception is conditioned it's very conditioned and uh, there are some scientists that say that of course none of this is impossible is none of this is possible to verify uh, I can't verify I know how I perceive things what I think I'm seeing and hearing I have no way to verify if it's similar or the same to, to what you perceive there's just no way to that I know of there's no way to check that so some scientists say that what we see, hear, smell, taste, everything of the outside world is all pretty similar in all of us, but it's not a true representation of what we're actually seeing or what we're experiencing with our senses. And we all know that there are different frequencies. Uh, for instance, in the, the visual function, there are, there are, planes of, of uh, light that we can't see you know, ultraviolet we can't see that that's one of them that's what they call it ultraviolet and there are frequencies that we can't hear you know that supposedly dogs can hear but we don't know there's a whole reality out there we think and we don't know we just experience it the way we experience it you know and in fact, the, the idea that there's a reality outside of us, around us, it's certainly our everyday experience that we've had our whole lives, but it's a belief, you know. That belief has a name, it's called, that belief is called positivism. And positivism is the belief that there's a world outside of you. But we don't really have any way to verify that. I mean, how can you? There's not really any way to verify that that's true. And for there to be an outside world, there has to be an inside world of your own subjectivity. Uh, of our self. The Buddhist people say that there is no self. There is no self as a thing. And the Zen master Shinzen, who's a guy in LA, someone asked him what is enlightenment, and he said, it's when you realize that you have no self as a thing. So we don't know maybe everything is all contained I don't know we only see it from a certain point of view though you know now what's really interesting is this Buddhist or this Zen point of view is recently been corroborated by corroborated by uh, <laughs> corroborated by discoveries in neuroscience and neuroscience recognizes that what we experience as self is actually memory behavior and they've known in, in science for a long time in, in uh, experimental psychology which is not the kind of psych it's not clinical psychology where it's about therapy it's about doing experiments experimental psychology they've known maybe for a century that 
that the mind is memory. It's a memory function in the brain. And of course, they're made of, of individual thoughts and concepts. And somehow we, whatever we are, becomes identified with those memories and we can project into the future based on those memories. And we believe that we're a, a consistent self based on memory. Are you really one self? Somebody out there must be saying, this guy's full of shit. You know, I'm me, give me a beer. I'm gonna watch TV, you know. But it's like, here's an example, you know. You get real inspired one evening and you prompt, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna get up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna go make, I'm gonna run for three miles, you know. And that's yourself asserting that, right? And if five o'clock in the morning comes and you're like, what? And the alarm goes off and you're like, oh, fuck no. And you don't go, you know. That's also yourself. So, these are all very deep questions. <laughs> but I thought that was fascinating, the structured world hypothesis. And I was very interested to find out uh, on the San Francisco Peninsula, there are all these communities south of San Francisco, suburban communities, that's where I grew up. And in I grew up in the town of Burlingame, which is uh, I don't know, San Francisco and South San Francisco and San Bruno and Millbrae and Burlingame and San Mateo and San Carlos. And west of Burlingame is a community called Hillsboro. Hillsboro's up in the hills. That's where the rich people live. That's where Bing Crosby had a mansion. So. If you go on the 580 freeway, it's on top of all that. And it's between the Hillsboro and on the other side of the freeway, there's an aqueduct. There's like, it's like a, a lake or something. It goes for miles and miles. That's where we get our drinking water. And as you go on the freeway over the, the top part of Hillsboro, somebody built a home there. They built a home that is, all the rooms are kidney shaped. It's made of adobe. Adobe is a kind of a traditional building material of the natives in Mexico. And it's, it's mud and straw built together. And this was made out of adobe and concrete. And it's all designed, they call it the Flintstones house now. It kind of looks like the Flintstones. And uh, all the rooms are, are, are soft shapes, kidney shapes and whatever, the whole house. It's been there for years. It's been there since I was in high school in the 1960s. So I would imagine if you go in that house, you don't see a lot of right angles, right? And a house that's kidney shaped. And it's interesting because except for quartz crystals. There, there are no right angles in any of nature. Alan Watts said, nature is wiggly. It's true. So somehow we came up with these, these right angles. You know, uh, if you've been living in a tent or a cave or something, and you learn how to fashion logs or timber, out of logs. It's a very efficient way to put things together and construct structures, you know. So that's probably how we started uh, how we started building things like that that are oblong. Anyway, thank you. Ciao.